The Anti Show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. These are the voyages of the GNT Show, our continued mission to explore Star Trek storytelling, to seek out new worlds and interesting characters, to Boliga, where no show has gone before. Live long and prosper, bitches. Convention News. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Terry live on the floor of Star Trek Las Vegas 2016, the 50th anniversary of Star Trek. And with us is Ryan Lovett, senior content designer. Yes. Oh, just, I keep throwing senior in everybody's title. I want to give them a promotion, but they keep saying no. I'm sorry. Ryan Lovett from Star Trek Online. Welcome. Oh, and with me also is our wonderful, lovable story. Kabla. <laughs> There's our man. And um, I just wanted to say thanks for joining us today. Are you having a good time so far? I am having a wonderful time. He's got a big smile. I have not seen this man all week without a smile on his face. It's just been huge, and he's just looking. Now, mind you, it's a huge convention this year, and it's been a blast. So how long have you been with Cryptic and working on Star Trek Online? Uh, just under a year. I actually uh, started last August. Oh, my goodness. And you started straight with the Star Trek project? Yep. I, uh, I joined up. Uh, to be a uh, Star Trek content designer. Awesome. We had the opportunity to talk a little bit yesterday about your love for... Sorry. Seven of Nines having an issue. She needs makeup. <laughs> um, we talked a little bit yesterday about your love for Star Trek, how you got into it. But were you as big a Star Trek fan before you started the job? So when I first started, um, I really loved uh, TNG. Um, I w watched tons of it. Um, I had watched some DS9, but kind of fell off of it, uh, and then kind of was not big into Star Trek for a while. Um, but I knew I enjoyed it enough that I was willing to, like, I was interested in getting a job with it. And then since uh, getting hired, I've been watching the entire show from the very, very first pilot of, uh, of the original series, and just going straight through it. I'm in the middle of Voyager right now, and I'm having a blast. It is such a fun IP. And you just started doing this how long ago? Uh, last year. All right. So in less than a year, you're already through half of the fifth series, or fourth series. Yep. Right. And did you re watch Enterprise first, or are you waiting for that last? Um, I watched some amounts of Enterprise just because we've been working in the Temporal Cold War setting, but really, I mean, like, Memory Alpha says, these are the 19 episodes after the uh, Temple Cold War. I've watched those. I figure I'll actually get to it when, uh, when I'm done with Voyager. So there's still a lot of Enterprise you haven't seen yet. So far, what has been your favorite sh series? Um, I still love TNG. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, DS9 has grown on me a lot more than uh, from before. Uh, but Voyager, I've been loving the heck out of Voyager. See, and that's really nice to hear. Yay, Janeway and fans. Um, we also have a, a consensus amongst the GNT show uh, group, Nick and Mike included, that Chakotay is terribly underserved. Definitely. Uh, he, he's really fun. He's like a really good commander. I just really like the chemistry of the Voyager uh, cast. Um, I think Janeway and Chakotay make excellent captain and commander. Um, they obviously really love their crew. Like They want to protect them. It's, it's a very like mom and pop sort of thing. And I, I, mean, I love how they all are together. It's such a great show. So going into Star Trek Online, uh, can you tell our listeners a little bit about what you do in your position? All right. So as a content designer, uh, I'm responsible for making various uh, episodes or missions, whatever you want to call them in our game. Um, in my time, in, in this last year, I've worked on uh, the Temporal Front mission. I've done uh, Vorgon Conclusions and Temporal Reckoning, and I also did the Days of Doom Q. And then on top of that, um, we also do various fiction pieces for the uh, website blog, and I did the fiction pieces for uh, the Samurai and Mechul uh, story, uh, Karma and Steel, and I also did the most recent story about Admiral Lita. Well, that's good, about Admiral Lita. So I know. So Mike, if you, ha I want to hand this over to you because Mike's got some questions. Yeah. 
now I'm all nervous. <laughs> okay, uh, so um, <laughs> I've, I've managed to play through all the, all, pretty much all of the content. Um, not all of the cues yet, but most of the content. Um, out of those, which ones are, which is your favorite? So I would say, oh my gosh, I really, I like all the stuff I've worked on. Um, I mean, Temporal Front has a special place in my heart as being the first thing I worked on, and I feel like I got to do a really major um, story moment, like a, sto a very major story piece as my first thing there. So it was a lot of fun. Um, but I think probably the favorite thing I've worked on was the Days of Doom Q. Um, a lot of people talked about how Qs are generally just very high DPS, but that's not the sort of way I play MMOs. I try and come up, I try and play as a support character. So I'm like, okay, what is something that everyone has something interesting to do? So I came up with the idea for the Days of Doom queue where I really wanted to have, you know, the tank have something important to do, the, the, the fast people have something important to do. And it, and it evolved into this, have some people defending the, the space station, you have other people running um, warp cores to, to slow down the uh, Dooms of the Machine, you have people trying to destroy the different interceptors that are getting in the way. Suddenly everyone has something interesting to do and it's not just about DPS. And I really love how it all comes together in the final act where suddenly you have the one large warp core and it's leaking radiation and no one can hold on to it for very long and you really want to start coordinating and, and not let it uh, get stolen away from you. Right on, right on. I was doing it all wrong, apparently. <laughs> um, okay, so I can, I can definitely see how, how having those different mechanics definitely makes things more interesting. And it gives players, you know, uh, a, a, a bet, a, more reason to work together rather than, you know, create a, you know, create a team and go in as a team rather than depending on the queue to kind of assign you because who knows what you'll get. But um, that, that's very cool. That's very interesting. So your, the stories that you've written for Age of, Agents of Yesterday and, um, and uh, what is it, the Future Proof, um, to me, it seems like those two uh, stories are, are kind of linked together. Um, do you know if there's any plan to either expand on those stories even further or, or to kind of consolidate them in a way? Because they seem, they seem like they belong together too much to be apart, you know? No, they, they definitely are related stories because they're both part of the, about the time travel and uh, um, I think... I don't know if we're planning on consolidating them because I think the whole, the fact that it is time travel shenanigans, it kind of makes sense for them to be sort of spread out. Um, and also Agents of Yesterday focuses a lot more on the TOS era side of things, while Future Proof features a lot more of the future side of, of things. So it's, it is useful keeping them separated. Um, as far as expanding them, it's it's never 100% certain whether like what else we will do with any particular piece of content. Very cool, very cool. Um, let's see, I, I managed to play through all of the stories when when uh, before the the con, so all of them kind of blur together. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that I had um, I had mentioned I had mentioned yesterday one of the issues that I had with. Um, what it was the story? I can't remember the title. Help me. It was the the episode with the uh, Federation president. Okay. At the end of the story, I don't know what happened to those people, and we had discussed it yesterday. And and uh, but could could you for our listeners put it in stone? What has happened to those people? All right. So I. I uh, this was my first piece of content, so I do apologize that it, I wasn't as I, I wasn't able to write it as well as I could. I should have. Um, it was great. It was great. I, now, I just know. if you play as a Klingon, you do get you do talk to Jim Pock at the end. So he does he does survive. Uh, he is okay. Um, and to be to be fair, he was meant to be a distraction. He was never the real target of the assassination attempt. That was always President Okeg. Um President Okeg survived because um, our unfortunate uh, ensign took the shot 
and she was, she, you know, <laughs> two weeks away from retirement or promotion or or something. But no, she, um, yeah, she was. She really wanted to be there, and and uh, she was willing to give her life to make sure that this all went down. So um, no, both both Okeg and Jumpak are fine, and will definitely be coming back in in future episodes. That's awesome. And we all will mourn, mourn for her, her loss. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, I, I, you've never been through a GNT show interview. And uh, one of the uh, consistent things that we have are similar to, have you ever seen uh, the actor studio? The old, uh, old, it is old now, but it was an old show on A&E where James Lipton would interview his, um, uh, actors uh, who were being focused on, but there was always a set of standard questions at the end. And we have taken James Lipton's questions and twisted them to our own means so we can torture our own guests with these questions. So they are, first and foremost, what it, you, we've kind of already answered it. You've said that TNG is still your favorite series, correct? Well, I mean, I think Voyager might be overtaking TNG as my favorite series. I love TNG. It, but Voyager is really good as well. It might end up being that TNG is my favorite series, but Voyager is turning into my favorite crew. Doug Drexler just walked up to our table, so I'm so excited. Academy Award winner walks by the table, and I'm like... So, um, the second question is, you are the captain of a starship in the Federation. The name of your ship is the USS... <laughs> he's so stumped right now. He's thinking, he's thinking. And meanwhile, I'll just sit here. I'll let you think. I'll let you think, and I'll describe what's going on in the room for our, fam for our family, which is our listeners. So at our table right now is Dayton Ward, uh, Terry Erdman, Doug Drexler, J.K. Woodward, Kevin Dilmore. It is astounding. I am at, it's seriously, the GNT show booth becomes the coolest place on earth once again. Hi. So, as you probably noticed from my forum handle, I do like Dune. So, usually when I'm making uh, guilds and stuff in very single player games, um, I, I call my group the, uh, the Shai Hulud. So, I'd probably be the USS Shai Hulud. I thoroughly approve of this answer. So, so great. All right. You are working for um, Star Trek Online or CBS or any other license, you know. No. Um, you are given not only the opportunity to, but the directive to kill a main Star Trek character. And the death will stick, meaning they will never come back, not even through time travel. Who do you kill? Oh, wow, you really do hit the hard hitting questions. Um, we like to make our we like to make our listeners our our, our big yeah. squirm. Well, our listeners squirm too, I'm sure. <laughs> hmm. I think I think I'd kill uh, Chief O'Brien. Well, there's an answer I don't think we've heard before, and is there a reason why? I found that as much as I loved um, TNG and, and really enjoyed Deep Space Nine, there's just always something awkward about watching Chief O'Brien. Like, his married life is always a train wreck to watch. Um, I always felt like his interactions with Bashir were just really awkward to watch as well. Like, Bashir really wants to be his friend, and he's always so standoffish about it. It's just, and, and, you know, there is something just very miserable about Chief O'Brien. So I just want to put him out of his misery. I love this. I, wait, I can't wait for Nick to hear this because this is awesome. I mean, there, was a new, there were so many episodes where he was uh, being tortured anyway, so it's like, this will put him out of his misery. So one of the, the one of the questions that we typically ask our author friends who work in the Trek world and in the science fiction world is if they had the opportunity to work in any other genre, what would it be? Twisting it for you in the game designer world, is there another IP or another genre you would like to do? Would you like to write books as opposed to get into gaming? Is there some other interest um, or IP you want to play in? I mean, I love games. I, I mean, the, the video game industry is definitely very important to me. I suppose if I couldn't be in video games, 
I would probably be very interested in, in trying television or movies because I love telling stories and I love sharing stories. I don't know if I'm good enough to be a, a straight up writer, but I felt I feel like I could definitely work on part of a TV production team or, or a movie production team. Very cool. Do we have anything else? If you uh, you could you, you have a starship, you have five five spots on your crew. Who are they? The, like of actual Star Trek people? Yes. Anyone in Trek? Who would you fill your crew with? Um, Guinan. Uh, and what position? Bartender. <laughs> An important role. I mean, honestly, I'd probably I'd probably just have her as a chief advisor because she knows everything anyway. Okay. <laughs> Um, I would probably have uh, Jadzia Dax as science officer. Um, I would probably have Riker as commander. Um, you just scored big points with me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's three. Um, Who would be your engineer? Engineer. I, I might actually go Torres because I feel like she gets things done without, with like minimal uh, whining about it. Like Scotty was always complaining about whether or not he could get something done, and I feel like even Jordy, like as awesome as he was, he, there, he he was never quite confident that he could get it done in time. But Torres always gets it done. Um, and then number five. So let's see, we need a tactical officer or or a security. Um, I think. Odo. That's a good answer. Yeah. Cool. And who would be the captain of... Well, he says my ship, so obviously I'm yes, captain. But who, who would be your favorite captain? I mean, if I, had, if I had to pick a captain to try and emulate, I would probably emulate Jan- Janeway. Very cool. Ryan, it's been a blast talking to you. Congratulations on Agents of Yesterday. It's been a huge success. We're all loving the new play. He's, Mike's already played. He's at level 60. I'm working my way through. We're having a great time. Again, congrats to you and to everybody on the team. Thank you so much. I love it. It's, it's so much fun being here. It's so much fun being a part of Star Trek. So I'm just, I'm on cloud nine. Awesome. Or cloud deep space nine. <laughs> Even better. Until next time, guys, this is Terry Lynn from uh, G&T Show signing off. Live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. Kapla! Jolan Truth. Music for the g and Show is provided by Five Year Mission, Enterprise Blues Band, Warp 11, Andrew Allen, and Gretz The g and Show is a BLB production. Move ahead, walk back to ten. Put a mini skirt on my old man. Represent the human race. Can we make this a happy place? To fully go where no man's gone before. I think I'm saying that. Zero G community Gonna travel to new worlds Team on down and meet some green girls Gonna see what we can see A fancy free Zero G community. Come and take a tour with. Be no cons or Kobe Yashi. I'm gonna travel to the end and make new friends with aliens. To fully go where no man's gone before. Space happy. I think I sang that line once before, but I'm not too sure. Won't be so happy, can't you see? A 